it, it's gotten more advanced now. So when you zoom in, it's kind of like a Google Maps where you can see the layout of um, you know, New Beginnings, you know, the gathering, the edge back there, um, the worship center. And so it's super, super dangerous. Um, and then lastly, um, I would say on Snapchat, to, to, um, it's okay to check their Snapchat, obviously. Like, you're their parents. Um, feel free to set the boundaries for them in their social media, um, the way they text, the way that they interact with their friends, you know, how long they can keep their phones. Um, for example, we have a, um, a family in, uh, in a high school that they don't allow their student to have their phone after 10 p.m., I believe. And I think that's great. I think it protects your student. I think nothing good really comes after 10. You're going to stay up late. You're probably not going to be doing anything too fruitful on your phone. Um, so set those boundaries for your students. Set those boundaries to where you know, you're able to talk to your student back and forth. Like, hey, what do you think about this? Is this fair? Is this something you think that we can both agree on? Um, and so I think that's uh, I think that's a really good way to go about Snapchat. So um, yeah, I was gonna say um, I don't think Snapchat is like the ultimate evil. I don't think you know if your phone or if your student has Snapchat on their phone. I don't think we need to freak out and say that we failed as parents. Uh, you know, I think Snapchat can be good. Uh, I actually kind of encourage my students to Snapchat here in service because it's free advertisement. Like, they're telling people, like, hey, they're at church, you know, they, they, like, they're loving what's going on. They're Snapchatting the game we're doing. Uh, and the reason why I love it is because, I mean, other students are getting to see it. They're seeing what they're doing. They're seeing, you know, they're in their world, um, and they're seeing that they're here. So there's good uh, uses and good avenues for Snapchat. Um, but we have to, you know, as parents, you have to be uh, just a step ahead. I, I'm going to always encourage that you're always following your students. Uh, whether it's Snapchat or Instagram, you're in their world. Uh, you know what they're posting. You're seeing what, uh, how, what they're doing, how they're using their social media. Because um, ultimately, if you're, if you're not following, you're, it's, you're just being ignorant to what they're doing. You're, you're not uh, seeing uh, what's, in, what's on their phone. You're not seeing what they're uh, posting. Um, and so I'm always going to encourage, as a parent, always, always, always be following them. Uh, be their friend. Be, uh, you know, be in their social media world as well. Because like we've all said, I mean, Snapchat, there's a lot of danger to it. There's a lot of good. Um, but the thing we have to watch out is privacy. Uh, Snapchat is one of the things we see the most in East Texas. Uh, this is a, the biggest avenue for sexting. Uh, this is not, um, I mean, it's mainly just because students, when they are behind the phone, um, they're on Snapchat, they feel invincible because everything seems to, oh, it's disappearing after, you know, a certain amount of time. And so I'll just, you know, I'll post what I want. I'll send to people what I want. Um, and so there's just this, uh, you know, invincibility about it because they're, they're junior high and high school students. Uh, they're not always the most forward thinking and they don't always think about the consequences behind what they do on social media. Um, I mean, unless somebody disagrees, but most of the time we find out uh, the students just only are always thinking about what they're posting and what they're doing on social media. So be their friend, be in their world, uh, and keep up with them. Uh, just see what they're doing, uh, and like we've all said, check their privacy settings on everything. Um, from Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, uh, check out the privacy settings, see what the world can see, um, even if they're their friend or not, or following or not. See what the world can see uh, of your students, because we want to protect, you know, you want to protect your students. You want to protect them, uh, you want to keep them safe, but you want, ultimately you want to make sure uh, the, the world isn't getting a view of your student that you wouldn't want yeah. um, through that. That's good. Um, so just like Colin said, man, be in their world. Um, be their friend, be their follower, encourage them. Um, I know that my mom loves to comment on every single post that I post. I don't know if they moms or dads like that, but that's a great mom, by the way. Um, but uh, Instagram, is the next one. Um, so Instagram is similar to Snapchat in the way that you can also now send videos and pictures and it disappears as well. And so um, this is something you need to watch out for as well. Um, just like similar once again to, to Snapchat to where on an Instagram story, they can post where they're at and people can see it and it's public, obviously. Um, and so just like Colin said, the privacy setting is such an important thing uh, because Anybody can see what they're doing. Anybody can see, you know, they might have posted a picture at your house, at their house, and they tag the location in the neighborhood now. So everybody knows where they live and where they can be found. Um, so 
in your in the book in front of you, there's a resource that shows you how to go to the privacy setting on Instagram and make sure that your student, you know, isn't able for everybody to see their whole world. Um, and so that's obviously up to you. You obviously can you know allow them to or not. It's up to you. Um, but we just want to give you that option to know that you don't have to let everybody do that. It's the same thing for Twitter as well, but um, we'll get there. Uh, for Instagram, um, it's, it's something that um, if you're not careful, it can become an avenue as well for sexting. Just because, like, oh, I know my parents might check my Snapchat, um, so I'm just going to do it on you know, Instagram, and then I'll just delete it, clear the history. Um, <laughs> but therefore, like in Snapchat, they have streaks, so they know, like, you know who they're actually sending it to, so it can be even more dangerous on Instagram because there's no streaks on Instagram. So you have to be careful about that. Um, but on the settings as well on Instagram, there's a way that you can go look and see what your students have liked in the last, uh, since they created their account, basically. And so that's a, a great way you can, you know, give your students a chance to be honest, like, hey, you know, are you struggling with anything? Is there anything you need to tell me um, the way you're following a social media account? Or is there any things that have popped up that, you know, have drawn your interest on the, on the flesh side? And, you know, obviously in that moment they decide to say yes or no, or maybe they forgot or whatever it is. It gives you a chance to now have the evidence that they have either had or have not. And so I would encourage you, I did this earlier to myself just to make sure I didn't click on anything dumb. Um, and scroll through, scroll through the, the uh, posts that they have liked. And once again, you can find that in the settings as well. And just like Colin said, the privacy setting, you can set that as well. And so. Yeah, and another thing with Instagram uh, is that you have the ability to follow hashtags, uh, and so that's kind of new to social media. And here's the danger in that. Uh, following hashtags, you can literally search anything. Uh, Instagram is semi-good at uh, kind of filtering what is actually posted, um, but Instagram kind of has a, uh, you know, a few flaws here and there. And so there's pornography that is uh, just flowing through Instagram that is just as you know, easy as a search a student is able to be. Uh, and it can be as simple as they were just seeing it through what their friends may like or, you know, somebody else is posted what seems harmless and it finds up, uh, ends up being in their feed. Um, but there's a, uh, we also gave you kind of like a dictionary for slang slash uh, just hashtags in uh, the booklet. That way you had a resource of knowing, you know, so here's some uh, hashtags that are being used here, some things. Uh, that may not, you don't even know what this means, it's just like four different letters, but it ends up going to this. Uh, one of the ones that we uh, kind of pointed out was uh, hashtag prom, which is just porn misspelled. Um, and it's just an easy way that you can almost overlook it most of the time, just uh, looking through your students' uh, feed, uh, that you don't actually see, uh, see that coming up because uh, it's just misspelled, I don't even know what that is. Um, and so we gave you that guide, that way you would have a better understanding of what's actually in the world around uh, your student. Um, because Instagram, it, it seems like, a, again, Snapchat, Instagram, both seem like uh, harmless tools uh, that provide a lot of uh, just pornographic content um, to just uh, like immoral stuff. Um, and so Instagram has uh, tried to block a lot of that out, but most of the time, uh, those kind of slip through. And something else um, that I've seen uh, in student ministry is uh, it'll be something like Spring Hill Couples. Uh, and this will be an account that just pops up out of nowhere and some random person is creating and usually it's to kind of like advertise, hey, this is the uh, dating couple uh, that is it right now. And so you just kind of submit this. It'll be posted uh, on Instagram, and so people can like, they can talk trash uh, about this couple or say why they don't think they're good together. Uh, and this is kind of just the enabling bullying. Uh, this is, uh, when you think about bullying, most of us try to think of it in a physical sense, um, but virtual and cyber bullying are real, and Instagram is one of those things that you kind of see this most. Uh, because, again, students feel invincible, they're saying what they want, um, and so uh, uh, profiles like Spring Hill couples or uh, Spring Hill junior high couples are things I've seen before. Everybody can use them, and you can see some of uh, the most hateful stuff said to students uh, just because people were just you know throwing that out there and trying to get that um, get that seen. Uh, and so again, Instagram can be used for so much good, but it's about having control as a parent. Uh, it's about remembering that it's your phone. It's not your student's phone. You're the one buying, uh, paying for it, 
Um, and so when your student tries to feel like it's theirs and tries to take control of their own uh, phone that you have given them, and that is a gift, uh, as a parent, it's your, your duty to kind of stand up and say, no, it's, it's my phone, we're, we have rules, we have boundaries, and this is how we're going to use uh, Instagram, and this is how we're going to uh, kind of follow those rules uh, through that. Yeah, that's good. <clears throat> okay, so the next one is Twitter. Um, so Twitter, for me, in the high school, is a popular one. It's not super popular in the junior high, right? Nah. Not, not as popular. Um, but for the older students, junior and seniors, Twitter is, is a constantly, uh, constantly being used. Um, so Twitter is basically, you know, a, a faster and younger version of, of Facebook, basically. There's videos, there's photos being posted, there's tweets going out, which is basically a, a post. Um, there's, there's favorites and likes being handed out. And so it's just another social media account that you can create your own world. Um, and so one of the dangerous things about Twitter is, uh, is also, uh, this is actually does a really, really bad job of blocking and um, prohibiting porn, porn sites, basically. And so um, and you can type in a hashtag on accident and you end up on a porn site. And so it's super, super dangerous if you're not careful and you're, you're not um, watching you know, what you type in or um, you know, what your friends are retweeting or something, something that's along those lines. And so um, with Twitter, this is something that I've recently just seen is that I know for myself, like, uh, any type of trigger um, that can push me away from doing what God wants me to do, um, I'm, I'm trying to basically, you know, block that. And so blocking accounts is a really, really big one. Um, you can go into settings once again and um, just look for privacy settings. Okay, you go to settings, and it'll show up privacy settings. But those privacy settings, you're going to see also, just like Instagram, you can make it to where... You know, people can't just see the tweets you're tweeting or what you're liking or what you're posting. But also, um, with the privacy settings, you you can um, make sure that you know those certain accounts aren't showing up on your feed. And so, a lot of times, it's not it's not really the students um, following certain accounts they shouldn't be following. It's, a lot of times, it's their friends. A lot of times, their friends are following things that they should not be seeing um, following. And so, when they retweet it, it's just like re reposting it on Facebook, they're going to be able to see it as well. And so it's, it's important. I, whenever I, I see something pop up, I'm just like, okay, no, I'm just going to go ahead and click this profile, and I'm going to block it. Therefore, no matter who retweets it, I'm not going to be able to see it anymore. Like, I'm going to have to actually go to that account to unblock it if I want to see it again. Um, so that blocking account is a really big one. And then the next one that I've seen is muting words. Muting words is, is a huge one. Um, so the way this works is that you can just type in, or once again, you go to settings, and privacy settings in, in the same area. Um, when you go to this area, you can put certain words in that, um, for example, you type in sex, and you mute it. You can mute it forever. You can mute it for a day, a week, whatever. Um, I've done this for like with spring break. Like I, I've went and muted spring breaks. So I don't see anything I shouldn't see um, for like a week or two. And so you type this word in, and, that, and now when you mute it, it's essentially like blocking that word. So no matter who tweaks this word, um, you're not going to be able to see it. And so um, if, if your friend you know, retweets something, or their friend retweets something that shouldn't be retweeting, and it has a word that indicates you know, sex or party or sexy or something like that along those lines, they're not going to be able to see it. And so it protects that student. So a lot of times when students want to do better, they just really don't know how, they know how to go about it. And so if we give them the practical tools to go about it and just you know, be able to go on their social media and feel confident that they're not going to see anything, and they're gonna, they're gonna strive, um, they're gonna thrive in that. And so blocking accounts and muting words is two things on Twitter that is um, really, really helpful in, in my mind, so. Yeah, and, uh, a couple accounts to kind of look out for is like Barstool Sports. Uh, this is gonna be an account that uh, sometimes talks about sports, but most of the time what they're actually putting out is uh, very sexual and so, uh, one of their main uh, things has been hashtag Yeti butts, and so it's literally a Yeti cooler and a girl in a bikini just sitting on top of it. Uh, and so those are what it seems like everybody's following. It's actually picking up and seeing. Uh, so Barstool Sports is one of those that's trying to get its name out there, but in reality, uh, what they're actually putting out is not a whole lot of uh, sports material, um, but indeed it's very sexual. Uh, content in nature. And Old Row uh, is kind of another one. Uh, they like to talk about like the party life in college uh, and they don't shy away in showing what that actually is and what that looks like. Um, 
So those are, uh, for Twitter and Instagram, those are big. Uh, they, like, they make their money uh, living and thriving on social media, and so they post a lot. They're uh, very, very uh, loud on social media, um, and so what they actually are posting uh, is very rude um, and just graphic uh, in nature. Yeah, and also to tag along with that, I would say that it is so okay, once again, to talk to your student, take their phone, you know, like, hey, can I see your phone? I'm just going to... Look through it. Look through their followers as well. Like make sure that they're not following, you know, accounts they should be following, or they could have accidentally followed something, or maybe they're following an account that they thought was something different, but they hadn't realized that it's not. Um, a lot of times we see accounts that seem normal at first, and then you actually go into their timeline and start scrolling through, and it's just things you should not, you know, be seeing as a student or as um, a follower of Christ. And so, um, man, I would encourage you to go through their followers and see who they're following as well, and click on accounts, you know, make yourself aware, um, educate and empower yourself. And so, um, so the next one is an app called Monkey. Um, so this app, if you ever heard of Omegle, it's basically like a random FaceTime chat um, with people. And so, um, it's on the phone, right? Yeah, on the phone or computer. Um, this app basically is like, you'll have 15 seconds where you can talk to somebody completely random throughout the United States or throughout the world, basically. And so it starts off as super friendly. Like, um, we were looking at the, um, like the reviews and like the pictures they posted on the app store. Looks real friendly. Looks like, you know, you're just talking to other teenagers and, um, you know, seems like you have a lot in common. But then the problem is, is what starts out as so, starts out as so innocent, ends up actually just becoming like just very, very dark, very um, just perverse. And, and so, um, Something that we've seen, now I know when we were growing up in high school, there was a same app called Omegle. It's like, it'll be a random, random face chat and you talk to people, but then, you know, you have people that um, are, are basically just trying to find girls or trying to find guys and trying to find new pictures or trying to find basically live porn, basically. They're just looking. And once again, it starts out as innocent. You might just, like, your student might just be on there trying to talk to random people, get to know different people. But there's also there's people out there that have no intentions of meeting new people for you know, fruitful purpose or just to have fun. Um, and so this app can be super dangerous. The problem also with this app is that this name is constantly changing. Just like I said, it used to be Omegle for us. And Omegle is still a real thing. But now they have it on your phone where it's called Monkey. And um, apps like this are constantly, constantly changing um, their names. And so just with the apps as well, it's, it's okay. And, and Colin will hit on this a little bit more. But... It's so okay to, to look into your student's phone and see and tap their apps and go through and play with it and make sure it's not anything um, it shouldn't be. Um, have, the, have the student explain to you um, what this app does, what's the purpose, why are you using this app? Um, and so, yeah. yeah, and so the reason why this one kind of made the list for us to talk about, uh, not that like three weeks ago, I'm walking through Spring Hill Junior High and every single lunch, and so they have it broken down and you have sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade lunch, and every single lunch, everybody's pulling this out, and they are literally uh, just like laughing. It's drawing a crowd, and they're trying to see who they uh, who they can message. Um, and so, like I said, I mean, Monkey is the name of it right now, uh, and that may be the app. And like we've got said, we looked at it on the App Store, and everything that every single snapshot that they had of the app, it looked friendly. It looked like something you would want to be a part of. It looks like a fun app. Uh, but there's so much danger behind this. Uh, there's so much danger uh, behind it, um, not only just for the, the FaceTime feature, but you can also, if you enjoyed that chat with somebody, uh, all you have to do is tap on their profile, and the next, uh, next thing you know, you're in a, uh, a text message-like uh, conversation with them. Uh, to where it just, that even carries the conversation further uh, and further and further. Um, and so I'm, I'm only saying this because we've seen it here at Spring Hill. Uh, this is not... Uh, some app that's uh, just you know popular here in Texas. This is at home. Uh, this is what we've seen here. Uh, this is what uh, I know our students are a part of. Um, if they're not on Fortnite, they're on this. Uh, you know, if they're not battling the way, uh, they are here just you know trying to have a good time. Uh, you know, FaceTiming random strangers. But uh, it's just one of those things where it could be even an, a great conversation at first that they're having with somebody that seems nice. Um, but we all know that uh, sin kind of just starts out slow and leads into something that, uh, and takes us further than we actually wanted to go. Yeah. Um, and so with students, it's the same. Uh, this could be a, a friendly conversation, and it could be like a modern-day pen pal or whatever. 
uh, that actually when, uh, leads them in this, uh, a place they actually never thought they would uh, go. And again, this is in Spring Hill. Yeah. Uh, this isn't far off. This is at home. Uh, this is what we're seeing our students with uh, right now. Yeah. Can right. this be followed from a different phone, or does it always have to be on the student's phone? Rephrase that question. Like, can I see any of their apps and things from so, my phone, or do I have physically always have to have the phone? I know there's some... Yeah, there's a program uh, that we, we talk about. We reference it in uh, the resource uh, page. Uh, called Net Nanny. Uh, this is one that you can actually see which apps they have on your student's phone. Uh, it's very cost efficient. Um, I know uh, a lot of people actually use this. Uh, it's something I recommend uh, over a lot of other programs just because of uh, the cost factor uh, and how much control you have over your student's phone with actually, without actually touching your student's phone. Uh, and it's just through that app. Um, and again, very uh, cost efficient. Uh, this is a way that you can block which app they download. So hearing, okay, hey, we don't want that app on there, it's blocked. We don't need it on their phone. They can't download it. Uh, they can't look it up uh, and search for it and try to download it that way. Um, so that's one way, but um, I mean, we always kind of recommend that you get on your student's phone because uh, one of the other things we're going to kind of talk about is, uh, and we'll just talk about it now, is apps like Vault and Calculator. Uh, those are apps that literally also change names every week because everybody tries to find out what they are. These are apps that hide pictures. Uh, it, you just open your phone and it looks like you have the calculator app. And then you open it up, you enter in a password, and then you get to uh, see what photos you saved that nobody else can see. Um, and so these are just uh, apps that may even pop up and you're like, oh, well, my kid wants to download a calculator app. I mean, let's, let's accept that, let's go. You know, they're trying to learn or whatever. Um, we can be a little naive at this. Um, and so they let, that can just slip through, but it just is hiding uh, a lot of information behind it. Um, you know, so one of the things we know is, is Vault and Calculator, but these are kind of things that it's hard to stay on top of just because it's always changing names as well. I'll add to that as well. Um, and um, to answer your question, Ma'am, uh, along with Net Nanny, I would be careful. And this is why we're uh, talking about Snapchat and why it's so important that we go through their followers and see who they're Snapchatting because uh, even with Net Nanny, like those those messages still disappear. And so we don't really know obviously what they're saying. They can tell you one thing and it could be completely different. Um, and so it's still an important thing. Uh, it doesn't catch the, the Snapchat messages uh, that they send or the pictures that they send. Um, and also with the, the apps and the, the vault um, and the calculator app is that um, this is a little personal, but I mean, we're all adults in here. Uh, I've been in situations to where in high school growing up, I've had friends that, thankfully, I'm not really friends with anymore, um, to where they've had this app as well. And this is why it's so, so important that we understand about sexting and the dangers of it and how it can just ruin um, students' lives, really, um, is that I've, I've seen to where uh, I've had a friend that had this app and had over... 200 pictures of girls across East Texas. And it just it blows my mind um, that it's, it's basically like uh, um, just sending pictures. Like, so if one guy gives it, he's going to send it to his friends, and then his friends are going to send it to his friends. So it's all across East Texas, it's just, you know, all across like White Oak, Spring Hill, Union Grove, like Jefferson. Like, and this is, this is how like students operate. Like, this is how sin distorts. Um, you know, the, the, the world that we live in. And so this hopefully this makes us, us a little bit more aware of just how dangerous this actually is. Um, and along with that story, we had, I've, had, um, I've had it to where I've seen uh, a girl in my school um, get publicly shamed for sending out a picture. So we obviously, you know, it's leaked or people will find out that this girl sent a picture or this guy sent a picture. It's not just always girls. Um, uh, this student has sent a picture and now she, she doesn't know what to do. She doesn't know how to handle it. She's, she's been depressed. I've had a student, I had a friend to where um, she's been depressed and almost essentially uh, committed suicide because she has been, um, you know, shamed and she doesn't know how to handle it. And so um, I think just knowing and being aware of the world we live in and um, <laughs> how crazy sin is can prevent so many situations like that. So um, Colin's going to talk about sexting and uh, just the dangers of that. 
Yeah, and I mean, I just want to kind of repeat this because I want this to be uh, kind of our advice is just uh, a couple things. Always, always, always be your, uh, your student's friend and follower on social media. Uh, don't just be the one who's approving the social media, but be the one who's in their world uh, viewing what they're viewing uh, and see what they're posting, see what they like, see what they're, uh, what they're doing on social media, uh, more than just getting on their phone, but also through your social media account. I think this is key. Uh, I think this is just uh, you as a parent being aware um, and being in there, and then always set boundaries. Um, be the person who sits down with your student and talks about, hey, at 9 o'clock you're going to turn your phone into me, um, whether that's during the school week, um, and in the weekends it's 10 p.m., uh, these are the apps you're allowed to have. Uh, maybe it's going as far as, hey, you're uh, in junior high, so I don't want you texting boys. Here's the easy way to solve that. You don't have boys' contacts in your phone. It's you know only your uh, friends who are girls uh, that you can have. And so just set those boundaries. Have that conversation. Um, I know my parents didn't like we're they were I was growing up in a world where uh, the smartphone was uh, becoming popular. There was so much, and my parents weren't catching up, and so the boundaries weren't necessarily set. Um, and so it may uh, just one of the things that you know pro tip for guys and girls is just uh, when they're home alone and they're uh, and maybe it's idle hands, they don't have their phone with them. Uh, protect them from that. Protect them from being. Uh, home alone and being bored into where it's easy to fall into that temptation of searching up something. Uh, because I know, like, just boundaries weren't talked about in my house. Yeah. And there's a lot of things I wasn't aware of uh, that, you know, my uh, hormones and just my emotions were driving me to, uh, but my parents weren't on the forefront of talking about this and just communicating, uh, you know, in just a clear way to help me understand. And I think the big thing is more than just setting boundaries is communicating why. Giving your students the why, uh, this is a rule, and why we are following this, uh, why we set this standard, why we set this boundary, uh, and why we want this for you. Um, because when they, when they fail, you can go back to that and say, hey, this is why. This is why we set this uh, standard. This is why um, we didn't want you to feel this hurt uh, that you're feeling and just kind of communicate that. Um, because if you're not setting boundaries, your students are going to run free. Um, you want to set boundaries. You want to uh, communicate very clearly with your student um, because I think you know having control uh, is one thing, but also communication with your student is big too. And I think this is going to help your relationship with your student, help a discipleship. And if you're sitting here in the room uh, today and you're thinking, "Man, I, my student's 17 and we haven't done any of this," it's not too late. Uh, this could be this like today could be the day that you uh, sit down and have this conversation with your student. Uh, to set these boundaries ultimately for their protection and, so, and for their godliness, their purity, uh, so that you can protect those things and also set them up uh, in such a way that they can strive after Christ and continue in their walk um, towards purity and towards uh, righteousness and, uh, instead of letting them walk into temptation uh, that way. And then, again, just check up on the phone. Um, be the person who's proactive, checking uh, what they're doing, checking uh, what's on their phone, uh, how the conversations are uh, with their friends. Uh, there's uh, nothing wrong with being a parent who is looking in and just observing. Um, and I'm not saying to be the helicopter mom who's just always just hovering, but be the one who randomly has checkups and you're just seeing what the conversations are. Uh, seeing what their friends are talking about. Um, you know, and what they're having a conversation with your student. Uh, because again, you're the parent. You're supposed to be the one who's raising them up uh, in a godly way um, and to be a person who's striving after Christ. Uh, and so we should be on the attack because here's what I know in student ministry uh, is that the enemy is on the attack and he's not just going to hold back and be like, well, I mean, they kind of set the boundary here, so I, you know, I guess I'm not going to be that, you know, attacking in that way. Uh, Satan's going to attack uh, and be proactive, set those boundaries, uh, check up on the phone, and always be in the world. Uh, don't separate uh, so much. And so that, I mean, along with social media, um, one of the things we kind of want to talk about is sexting, uh, because this is a, a huge thing in uh, student ministry. Uh, this is for, uh, you know, if you're a junior high parent and you're thinking, okay, the conversation's over for us, uh, we looking at the national average, uh, sexting is beginning at the age of 13. Um, and we're looking at it not just a small percentage, this is a, a major percentage uh, nationwide starting at the age of 13, um, and that's just percentage-wise. We also know that uh, it's starting younger than that. Uh, the moment students are getting a uh, phone in their hands, 
Uh, we're seeing a lot of uh, just activity with this. Um, a lot of schools are trying to be on uh, the proactive side of this as well um, by having um, why you shouldn't sex programs and things like that. Um, and the only issue with that is most of the time they're telling the student no and not saying, hey, this is what we say yes to. Um, and so we wanted to kind of uh, go through uh, some of these just resources and practical tools to help you as a parent give your students something to say yes to um, in regards uh, to sexing and just uh, being a Christian who has social media. Um, and so one of these things is uh, students are sexing because they're still developing mentally. Uh, that's a no dust statement, um, but what we see is that they're, uh, they're just developing. They're, uh, they're often uh, driven by impulse uh, and just going after whatever they want in the moment. Um, so there's just a lot of development going on, um, and so they're trying to handle that. Um, and one of the things I think we can do as parents is just talk through this. Have the conversation uh, that you know as a student that you did on the impulse, they may be doing on a different level, but just being open, having that uh, open door conversation with your students and the open door policy where your students can talk to you about whatever. Yeah. Um, because these are things, um, because you know everybody seems uh, to want their student to grow up quicker than they actually need to, um, one of the things, the reason why students are sexing is because they're developing, uh, just, you know, uh, still developing mentally and don't know how to handle it. Um, and so they just, they don't know what to do. Um, and so that's one of the things. Uh, another one is they, they think no one's going to find out. Uh, this goes with Snapchat, this goes with Instagram, uh, when they think, okay, hey, I'm going to send it, it's going to disappear. Um, whether they, you know, screenshot or whatever, they just think nobody's going to find out. Uh, they think this is uh, kind of just a way that they can, um, you know, act on this impulse without actually uh, having consequences because they think, hey, I'm invincible, nobody's going to find out, it's okay, it's in the secret, it's in a message form, it's not in public, um, and so it's fine. Um, but the reality is uh, there's a lot of ways uh, to get on this. Um, and another thing that we, this kind of goes back to social media a little bit, but also on the lines of sexting. Uh, there are websites where uh, people collect uh, nude photos, and uh, whether it's of uh, daughters or sons or whatever, they collect these photos and we'll put them on the website as like kind of like, hey, we won. Here's our uh, trophy. Here's what we what we have. There's also websites where uh, people can get on and request by name. Hey, does anybody have nudes of this person, this student? To where now it's become a, there's a target. And so they're after it. They're going to try to get that and put it on uh, the website. And so when they think nobody's going to find out, there are so many avenues where people are trying to get these and obtain these uh, nude photos just because they, they want the trophy. Uh, there's uh, kind of this uh, sense of pride um, for the person on the other end when they finally get it to where they can uh, post it and brag about it. Um, another one is the majority of their friends do it. Um, one of the ways that a student can feel uh, just safe and like feel like this is an okay idea is when everybody else is doing it. Uh, this is more than just peer pressure. This is just a sense of, well, hey, my friends are doing it, so it must not be that bad. This must be an okay uh, thing to do, and so they just partake in it. Um, they're just uh, with their uh, friends are doing it. Um, and one of the things that we wanted uh, to make aware is in the state of Texas, uh, if somebody has a uh, nude photo or uh, send a nude photo or just in the possession of uh, nude pics, um, one of the things and one of the issues with this is that now uh, that person can be charged with uh, child pornography. Um, and so it doesn't matter the age, they can be charged with child pornography trial, uh, trial for this uh, and then become labeled as a sex offender for the rest of their life. Uh, this follows them. Uh, this is a very serious thing. Um, this is more than just, uh, you know, whether you have a son or a daughter, this is, uh, this is an attack on both sides. Um, one, one of the things we're noticing is that uh, it used to be easy to uh, kind of talk to the guys about pornography um, because we knew that they were all dealing with it and this was just a sexual sin that every guy struggled with. We're seeing more girls uh, struggle with pornography um, and also just kind of not only just viewing it, but they're addicted to it. Uh, this is a growing rate. Uh, I want to say, uh, maybe we say 80% of our students are uh, kind of looking at or addicted to pornography, uh, and that's male and female. Yeah. Um, there's not a clear cut, hey, this is the line that's strong, um, and it's not just one side that's heavier than the other now. It's, it's an attack on both sides. Yeah. Um, and this is a big deal uh, for us just because of the law side of it, but also just uh, on the purity side of it. Let me add in real quick. Um, 
But I would also say for parents that have younger um, students, you know, six, seven, eight, nine, and might have already have a smartphone, is, um, man, I saw a, a stat that shows that the average age um, for uh, a young male um, to see pornography the first time is nine. Nine years old, and it's obviously it's so, so young. Um, but this is the world we live in, you know. This, this is the world that, you know, once again, one wrong letter in a URL, or one wrong letter in a hashtag, um, or musically or Twitter, or Snapchat, even on Snapchat, um, like, now they're on a porn site, and they're just like, they don't, they don't know what it is, and no one's explained it to them yet, and just like Colin said, like, we grew up where our parents didn't explain, this is what, this is the dangers of what you're looking at. And, I mean, we can't really blame our parents. They didn't grow up in the social media era, uh, era as well. Um, and so they were just uninformed. And so, like, now that we know, we're obviously able to tell, you know, our students and our, our, um, our kids, like, hey, this is a dangerous that you know, you can face. And so, um, and don't, don't count out the, the, um, the third and fourth and fifth graders as well. Like, they are still at risk as well, especially um, since they're just so innocent. They're just playing games. The ad pops up. Um, next thing you know, you're on a... Um, a website you shouldn't be on. So. Yeah. Um, real quick, we're going to kind of just uh, finish with this. These are in the resource we gave you. Um, the students are, uh, who sites are engaged with porn um, because they, they see it on the web, uh, they think this is okay and they, go, they gravitate towards that on their phone um, and just trying to see it for real, trying to see uh, somebody they know actually uh, new. Um, and so they go towards that. Uh, they're seeking approval. Uh, one of the things I want to speak into this is parents is have the conversation um, telling them about their identity in Christ, uh, telling them that they are uh, accepted and loved. Uh, most of the time this seems like uh, such an easy thing, but it can be overlooked as parents. Uh, talk about how where their approval actually can be found in, in Christ uh, and how they should be seeking after Christ. We talked about this, uh, Jesus is the bread of life. Uh, have those conversations with your student, um, mainly because if they do not find approval um, at the home, they're going to find it from somebody else uh, in a different way. Um, and so just have these conversations with your student. Um, one of the uh, last things is that, uh, the reason why they sex is that they believe this is safe sex. Um, and so, yes, it may, you may not uh, get an STD or, or AIDS from uh, sending a nude photo, but one of the things we've talked about already is sin only moves in one direction. So if it's starting with sexting, it's going, it's going to only lead to the next thing. Um, and so having these conversations, being on top of it, being prepared, um, just helps us uh, kind of realize that just having the conversation of uh, what sexting is and how uh, you're giving some of yourself away uh, to somebody who is not uh, your husband or wife uh, that is actually going to harm you uh, mentally, uh, physically, and is going to uh, harm some of your relationship with your future spouse. Uh, as well, but it, again, is it? It may just start with sexing, but it only sin only moves forward. It only goes one direction, um, and so we've got to be on top of this. Um, I wanted to kind of talk about some practical tips in handling sexing, uh, because this seems like one of those things where we uh, try to just throw out the white flag a little too soon. Um, but I think there's some practical tips that we can talk about um, that can just help us get uh, one foot forward and help uh, stop this little um, this this issue uh, with students. And one of those is just uh, talk about your, uh, talk with your child about uh, family morals and expectations and the biblical uh, design for sex. Uh, I think a lot of students don't understand this. Uh, one of the things we're going to do in student ministry uh, in the upcoming year is to have a, uh, a dating series where we talk about dating, where we talk about real life subjects uh, that students are going through just so that they have a better understanding of what the Bible says about this. Um, as parents, we want to help you. If you uh, don't know how to have this conversation or don't know exactly where to lead, uh, contact us. Uh, find us in our office. Let, let us have this conversation with you because um, we believe that the student truly understands the biblical design uh, for sex uh, and, and marriage, uh, then we, we think they would have a better understanding of why they shouldn't sex or why they shouldn't be looking at uh, pornography or things like that just because they uh, would have a better understanding. Uh, in that. Um, going back to another thing is just establish rules for cell phone use. Um, this is bigger than just text messages. This is in social media. Uh, when we talk about Snapchat, so establish rules. Um, maybe it's, you know, have you taken up your phone at 9 p.m., but at 8 p.m. you stop conversations with people just because we don't, uh, we don't 
I don't believe anything good happens after this point or, um, or after this time. Um, and so just being on the forefront, set the rules, set the boundaries. Uh, as a parent, you have the right uh, and you have control on that. Um, just take the leadership. Uh, educate yourself on apps. We hope that the resource we gave you uh, was helpful. Um, but we also hope that um, you would uh, take the, uh, that knowledge and also just look up and educate yourself on apps that you see on your students' phone. Um, that may be looking it up on the App Store or just uh, a simple Google search on, hey, is this safe? Or um, go to one of the websites we provide um, and kind of offer, that's been a big help for us, is to educate and empower kids. Uh, this is a website that will uh, constantly keep you updated on, hey, here's the 12 most dangerous sites or apps for students uh, in the year 2018 or whatever. Um, and so they constantly are keeping us updated. They're always uh, on top of it. This is a resource that we use, uh, and especially in preparation for tonight, um, to just kind of help us better um, uh, just kind of talk about this with you. But um, that's a website I believe in. Uh, it's not going to give you maybe the gospel center uh, view on things, um, but it's because uh, they're going to give you real practical tools uh, they also give great tips on, hey, how to have uh, the sex talk with your student. How do I help uh, my daughter who's struggling with pornography? How do I have that talk with her? Um, those are just practical tools, and then we can come alongside you um, with maybe the theological side of things uh, if you need that help. Um, one of the big things that we, uh, we talk about here is create a plan. Uh, talk about with your student a plan if uh, the student receives a new photo. What's the plan? Who do you report it to? Um, so maybe it's if you receive it, you go to the principal and you talk to the principal after talking to you uh, and just create this plan of this is how we are going to attack this. Uh, this is what If this happens uh, to you, here's the plan. Here's the game plan. Um, I mean, everybody who uh, wants to be successful has action, uh, action plans and action steps for things, so why not uh, in this topic? Um, and so even creating a plan of uh, somebody is off asking or um, trying to get new picks uh, from your student, what's the game plan in that? How do I lead in that conversation as a student on the other end of the phone um, without just running to my parents? How can, how can you communicate to your student, uh, this is what you need to say, this is, uh, you, know, you know, talk about, hey, well, if I do this, I'm gonna regret it, you're gonna regret it. Um, so I, I think this is better off that we don't uh, partake in this. Or um, so just kind of uh, creating this plan uh, and uh, get a uh, game plan and steps for this, um, mainly just because uh, one of the things that we've received uh, just as advice uh, from people we know who are experts in this is that everything works better with a plan. Everything is uh, smoother with a plan, and especially in this area, to have that plan of, hey, this is what happens whether you fail or somebody is trying uh, to get something from you. Uh, and so just creating those plans uh, and just kind of uh, talking about uh, checking your phone. So again, we mentioned this because we honestly believe uh, the more that you're in your student's life and you know what's going on, uh, the more proactive you can be uh, with that. And so again, we have a lot of uh, resources, a lot of information. We gave you our notes uh, through this because we wanted you to look back on this. Uh, we wanted to partner with you um, and we wanted to help you uh, in this step. And one of the things that we've done already uh, just in student ministry is we just got finished with a series called This Is Us. Uh, we titled it that way because of uh, the popular TV show uh, that deals with real life subjects. We wanted to deal with real life subjects with students. Uh, so we talked about identity, we talked about work, and we talked about purpose. Uh, three big things that we think uh, students struggle with and don't really understand they struggle with and communicated in uh, their language of uh, what does it mean to have your identity found in Christ or what kind of worth and value do you hold as a person. Um, and so we, we talked about that. That's, I just wanted to let you know that's what we've done. Uh, we're going to continue to do in student ministry is to be on top of this, uh, on this subject uh, because we believe students just need to be aware. Um, and so we also kind of wanted to offer, uh, it'll be on the screen um, at some point, it's just our social media accounts. Um, one, we want you to follow us, um, but we also wanted to kind of model for you, hey, this is how you can interact on social media as a Christian. Uh, you're going to see me and Levi talk about the church a lot. Uh, you're going to see me, uh, you know, trash talk the Mavs a lot uh, because they're terrible right now. Um, and so you're going to see that on my Twitter account, and it's all right. It's okay to uh, love sports and love Jesus uh, and, you know, have these conversations. 
Uh, but just follow us on social media. Um, give us a follow. Uh, this can maybe be a tool for you to see uh, you know, how you can use social media uh, to not only advance the kingdom, but just as a Christian, how you use it. Um, and so we just wanted to offer that as a resource. Uh, and our offices are always open. Um, we're always willing to have a conversation with you. We want uh, to make sure that um, you're well prepared, and we just want to we want to invite you in um, because I don't want you to just think I'm just here for your students on Sundays and Wednesdays. I'm here for you guys as well. Um, me and Levi, we're here for y'all as well because uh, our heartbeat is not just for the students, for the family. We want the family uh, to continue to grow and uh, be disciples in Christ. Um, and so we are here. Um, we're going to uh, pray and then dismiss you to live groups, but before you go, if you have any questions, um, just grab us on the way out, um, and we would love to talk with you guys. Uh, thank you again for being here. Um, we hope to have more of these conversations uh, in the future. So let's pray. Jesus, we love you. We thank you for this day. We thank you um, just for all that you've done in this, Lord, um, especially just the wisdom and knowledge on uh, parenting in today's uh, world uh, with social media, uh, with everything that is uh, coming about. Um, God, I'm asking right now that uh, you would protect every family in here, Lord, every family a part of New Beginnings. Uh, Lord, as, uh, the enemy is on the attack. Lord, we ask that um, you would just give us boldness, you would give us strength, uh, and just wisdom on how uh, to navigate through these waters. Um, God, we are asking uh, that you protect us, keep us safe, and Lord, uh, just keep our eyes on you so that we can strive to be like Christ. It's in your name that we pray. Amen.